Value, like beauty, is in the eye of the beholder, but in the world of high-end audio, where highly regarded DACs can cost tens of thousands of dollars or more, can a small portable DAC you can tuck in a pocket that costs just 200 bucks really be worth your attention? Let's find out with the AudioQuest Dragonfly Cobalt. Jenkins, a new reviewer here on the Absolute Sounds YouTube channel. I focus on entry-level high-end components that might appeal to people just getting into audio or those like me who have to enjoy their music in real-world rooms. In this review, I'm going to speak primarily to high-end newcomers, or maybe digital newcomers, but for everyone else, I'll say up front that the Dragonfly Cobalt doesn't sound anything like what you might expect from an entry-level DAC. So backing up, what is a DAC? It's short for Digital to Analog Converter, and it does exactly that, converting a digital audio signal of ones and zeros into an analog signal that can then be amplified to drive speakers or headphones. DACs are everywhere. Your smartphone, your smart TV, your computer, CD player, wireless headphones, in your car. And for home audio use, standalone DACs, rather than those built into other components such as integrated amplifiers or home theater receivers, come in all shapes and sizes and at all price points, from around 70 bucks to around $170,000. Some are portable, others are designed to sit on your desk or with the rest of your sound system. Some are USB devices designed to work with computers, phones, or tablets, while others are designed to work with a disc player or a network streamer, or may have a streamer built in. Dig a little deeper and you'll find a bewildering array of specifications, starting with the fact that there's no one standard technology behind DACs. Some use a dedicated DAC computer chip from Texas Instruments, ESS Technology, or others. So-called R2R DACs use a ladder array of resistors, while others use what's called a Field Programmable Gate Array, or FPGA. Next, there are the formats. Most DACs use PCM, or Pulse Code Modulation, but some use DSD, Direct Stream Digital, a format developed for Super Audio CDs. Then, different DACs have different resolutions, which is described in terms of bit depth and sampling rate. Bit depth refers to the amplitude of the digital signal, while sampling rate is the number of times per second the digital signal is sampled. CD quality digital is often referred to as 44 slash 16, as in 44,000 samples per second and 16 bits, while high definition digital starts at 96,000 samples per second and 24 bits and goes up from there. Most DACs today will read most digital file formats, from MP3 up to lossless high resolution formats like FLAC. Some DACs will also decode MQA. Some DACs will also decode MQA, a proprietary format that I mentioned because if there's a particular format you want to play, you need to choose a DAC that actually plays it. I mention all these things not to confuse the issue, which can get very confusing, but to say that, as with anything in life, there's probably not one DAC that's best at everything. Most important is that the various technologies and specifications don't tell the full story. While DACs perform the same basic function, they certainly don't sound alike. And what it really comes down to is getting the features that you want and fitting your budget and what sounds good to you. So now the Dragonfly Cobalt itself. AudioQuest calls this small blue stick, it's about two and a quarter inches long, three quarters of an inch wide, and a quarter of an inch across, a USB DAC plus preamp plus headphone amp. So let's break that down. First, it's a DAC. There's a USB-A connector at one end that plugs into a computer, or with the help of an included dongle, a USB-C port on a computer, tablet, or phone, either Apple or Android. Next, it's a preamp, meaning, meaning that it can send a suitable signal to your amplifier to drive your speakers, which is primarily how I used it. Finally, it's a headphone amp, meaning you can plug your headphones into the end opposite the USB connector. And one note about that, you use the same 3.5 millimeter headphone outlet to connect to the amplifier, which is a bit unusual in that it means you can't use a standard analog RCA cable. You'll either need an adapter or a specific cable that's RCA at one end and has that 3.5 millimeter mini plug on the other. In terms of technology, the Cobalt uses a DAC chip from the aforementioned ESS, one with a minimum phase slow roll-off filter. Yet more technological complexity to consider, although the payoff, says AudioQuest, is more natural sound. ESS also supplies the Dragonfly Cobalt's headphone amp, which outputs 2.1 volts, which the company says is enough for power-hungry, low-efficiency headphones. 
But if you already have a pair of headphones or are considering buying a particular pair, you want to check their specifications to make sure. I'm not a big headphone listener, but the Cobalt drove my Hi-Fi Man Sandaras with no problem. In terms of file formats, AudioQuest promises the Dragonfly Cobalt plays everything from MP3 to MQA and high res, and it played all the digital files I threw at it without issue. During use, the Dragonfly logo lights up in different colors depending on the file's sample rate. Green is CD quality, 44 kilohertz. Up through blue and yellow to light blue, it's normal maximum of 96 kilohertz. But then it lights up purple if the file is MQA encoded. The Cobalt is an MQA renderer, which means some other software must be used to unfold the MQA file, such as Tidal's streaming app. And so equipped, the Cobalt can play MQA files up to 192.24 resolution. Last but not least, the Cobalt also incorporates power supply filtering to reduce radio frequency noise. This brings me back to the Dragonfly Cobalt's price. While there's no guarantee that an expensive DAC will sound better than an inexpensive one, in terms of typical high-end pricing, $200 is next to nothing. Because of that, as well as its small portable design, it would be easy not to take the Cobalt seriously, but that would be a big mistake. Ever since the Dragonfly Black and Red appeared in 2016, they've been lauded by critics and owners alike, and the Red, along with the Cobalt, which arrived in 2019, have received several awards from the Absolute Sound, including an Editor's Choice Award, a Golden Ear Award, and a place in the top 50 bargains in high-end audio. I'm not here to disagree with those awards. After reading Robert Harley's review in the Absolute Sound magazine, I bought a Dragonfly Red and have been using it with AudioQuest's Jitterbug USB filter ever since. But as soon as I got the Cobalt, it was clear that it was better than what I'd been listening to for several years. So now, finally, let's talk about the sound. Just a brief interruption, esteemed viewers. As you may know, I'm Tom Martin, Chief Content Officer of the Absolute Sound. We have a new product. It's on the Substack platform and we're going to do some interesting things with Substack. First of which is reader questions and answers. Each Monday, readers will submit questions, we'll pick the most interesting ones, and we'll answer the questions on Friday. We'll also have early access to articles and special blogs that don't appear anywhere else. We hope you'll join us. It's only a cost of a cup of coffee per month. Just check on the screen or in the show notes below. Thanks, and now back to the show. One disclaimer first, the Dragonfly Cobalt punches far above its weight. I did most of my listening with a sound system that cost around $6,000 in total and included the very revealing Golden Ear BRX speakers Tom Martin reviewed here on YouTube about a year ago, and the $200 Dragonfly wasn't phased at all. Put another way, the better the rest of your system is, the more you'll hear from the Cobalt. So what exactly does the Cobalt deliver? I've broken it down into four areas. The first is a big airy sound stage. If you're listening to a recording of an orchestra, you'll hear the music as well as the hall or the sense of the size of the hall it was recorded in. And songs like songs with effects like rain or crickets chirping, and I mention these two examples not because I generally listen to music with those things in them, I just came across them on my playlist. Effects like that reach out, with the BRXs in particular, to envelop you to the point where I sometimes looked around and especially up to see just how tall the space was that I was hearing. Basically, if it's on the recording, you'll hear the three-dimensional space, and that's a big part of making a recording sound like real life. Second, and probably most striking, is detail. Make that a lot of detail. If you've ever heard a solo piano playing live, you'll know you don't just hear the notes. You hear the pianist's fingers striking the keys, their feet on the pedals, tapping time on the floor, and if you're close enough, you might even hear the hammers hitting the strings. The Cobalt reveals these kinds of details, and I'll add another caveat here. At first listen, a lot of people will think it is too detailed. A friend of mine who's been listening to a listening to vinyl on a really nice system for a decade heard the cobalt through my Sandaras and hated the sound. He thought the wealth of details distracted from the musical whole. I had similar feelings at first, but in my case, it was because songs I, songs I thought I knew well suddenly sounded very different from what I was used to. There was too much going on in the sense that not only could I hear a trumpet, and thanks to the Cobalt's accurate reproduction of tone, that trumpet was easily identifiable as a realistic sounding trumpet with a Harman mute, specifically. 
In addition to the trumpet, I could also hear the separate and distinct snare drum and kick drum and cymbals and stand-up bass and piano and tenor sax. Not to mention, in numerous songs, hearing musical details in the background I'd never heard before. It didn't take long to realize that's how things sound in real life. All that information is there in a jazz club, but unless your sound system is revealing enough, you often don't know those details are even on the recordings. So, just like in real life, I found myself following the different elements that make up the music at different times. The bass line here, the piano's counterpoint there, and once I got used to all that information, it quickly revealed a whole other and much more engaging world in songs that I thought I already knew. There's one possible real downside here, which is that the Cobalt allows you to hear mastering tricks, like doubling of instruments, added reverb, some element that was mixed in separately from the rest, basically the things that happen during and after the recording process. This isn't necessarily good for en musical enjoyment, but it is what's actually on the recording. Third is liquidity, a smoothness, ease, and naturalness with which notes roll from one to the next. The Cobalt never sounds processed, for lack of a better word, it's musical, smooth, coherent, and easy to listen to for long periods of time. I've heard other very detailed DACs that lacked this sense of liquid ease, and while that detail is impressive in a way, after a while it becomes wearing and unpleasant to listen to. The detail stands out too much and becomes harsh or etched. I listen to a lot of rock music, and the electric guitar in something like The White Stripes Ball and Biscuit can sound harsh and brittle through some DAX, forcing me to turn down the volume because it basically hurts my ears. That's not the case here. With Cobalt, I could crank up the volume as much as I wanted without the sound ever becoming unpleasant. And I think part of this ease, as well as the lack of harshness, comes from an overall lack of noise in the background, which is clear and quiet. Similar to what I mentioned in my review of the PowerQuest 303 power conditioner, also made by AudioQuest, the Cobalt removes a haze from the sound, revealing more of the music underneath. Fourth, despite its liquid, natural-sounding nature, the Cobalt sound isn't inherently laid back or mellow. Instead, it's very dynamic and crisp, and just as important as the abundance of detail, it really conveys the emotion and energy of music. It's engaging, and it'll set your toes tapping or your head nodding, whatever it is you do. It's easy to get caught up in a song, decide to stop listening when it ends, but then just get drawn straight into the next song. One element of that sense of energy is the Cobalt's low-end performance. The bass goes deep and hits hard without being loose or floppy. Bass notes are tight and textured. They're not just thumps or booms in the background, unless that's actually what they are, in which case, that's what you'll hear. And this is a good time for one last aside. Before recording this review, I received a pair of Paradigm Premier 700F speakers, which I'll be reviewing in a future video. These are more all-around, much more forgiving speaker than the Golden Ears, and I won't say too much about them here besides noting that with Cobalt, the Paradigms couldn't produce the same enormous soundstage or astonishing clarity and detail as with the Golden Ears, but they were just as musically enjoyable, easy to listen to, as well as harder hitting in the mid bass and bass, and much more engaging with rock, rap, hip hop music. The two speakers are very, very different, but the Cobalt's strengths were evident with both of them. As I mentioned earlier, I don't disagree with any of the praise the various dragonflies have received over the years, and listening to the $200 Cobalt through the $1,900 Golden Ear BRXs was a seriously tough test, and ultimately one that revealed just how capable this little DAC is. If you're looking for your first DAC or building an affordable system, the Dragonfly will not only deliver great sound, it's good enough to still be relevant as you update other components over time. Plus, you can use it with your phone and headphones and go mobile. In short, it's a truly excellent and seriously low-cost entry into the world of high-end audio. And if this is where you are in your own audio journey, I can't recommend it highly enough.